Thank you, Mr. Chair, members, Representative Wally Hicks, House District 3, Josephine County. I'm here today to present a letter to the committee from Kirk Bruss, Trial Court Administrator for Josephine County Circuit Courts, uh, which should either be in your possession or soon will be, and also to articulate how the situation of courthouse security is playing out on the ground. We can email it in if, if necessary. Um, <laughs> Courthouses are inherently very dangerous places. No matter what the nature of the case, be it divorce, be it land use, be it criminal, the people are usually very emotionally involved <coughs> and quite frankly half of them leave every day disappointed. Uh, <laughs> courthouse security, therefore, <laughs> Is, uh, is of critical importance, both to the general public, who make uh, a lot of use of our courthouses through various ways, uh, and also to the staff, uh, most of whom are state workers and employees, <coughs> and of course the judges. The, uh, the money the state provides pursuant to the 1983 agreement is small. I, I want to say it's more on the scale of about $50,000 to Josephine County, anecdotally. That, uh, that is still coming in, however, in May of this year of 2012, uh, Josephine County, the county commissioners were forced to make extreme cuts in the overall level of public safety, and at one point they even decided to, uh, to cut courthouse <laughs> security entirely and shift that burden entirely over to the state. Uh, Already, we were working on a skeleton crew, but by cutting all support of courthouse security, that frankly cut all courthouse security. And so we were faced literally with a situation in which we have two courthouses in Josephine County, neither of which would have any security whatsoever. What we currently do, so the county commissioners did revisit that decision and change it. They are currently uh, employing essentially one contract deputy, a shared expense with the state between the 50 or so thousand dollars that is part of this, this somewhat endangered fund that, uh, that the state uh, uses for court <laughs> security and also uh, the county. But the way we leverage that is through a volunteer system. We have, again, the two courthouses, one deputy guarding both of them simultaneously mm. through a network of uh, very dedicated volunteers who are um, well-meaning but not DPSSD certified and so are armed for that matter. And so something happens, hopefully a volunteer will be able to cover the situation, um, but we're just going to be in a system of waiting that nothing, hoping nothing happens in the meantime. Uh, traditionally, the counties <coughs> make a lot of use of their courthouses. Josephine County, for example, the sheriff had been, until a couple of months ago, co-located with the state in the courthouse. So, uh, in theory, if some emergency were to occur in the Josephine County Courthouse, the sheriff's office would be on hand to respond. That situation is, uh, is no more. The sheriff has since moved across town over to the jail, which he occupies now full-time and has now moved out of our courthouse. House. The city, uh, fortunately, uh, leases a portion of the courthouse. I think the detective pool is located there. And so, um, in theory, if an emergent situation were to occur in the main Josephine County Courthouse, uh, somebody from the city might show up if it's during the proper working hours and the detectives have nothing else to do. But it's not, it's not a firm plan. And again, that leaves the other courthouse virtually unguarded virtually unguarded, and that's where the family court I occurs, where we have the restraining orders, we have the, the juvenile uh, delinquency, we have, uh, and persons who are incarcerated go there too, uh, and we have a variety of other, of other uh, very uh, high, uh, high, highly intense cases occurring. So, uh, so the situation is not good, is my takeaway on that. Uh, that's, that's how it really looks on the ground in the courthouse, uh, in one of Oregon's courthouses, or two of Oregon's courthouses, one of our circuit court systems. Um, the, uh, uh, the solution is not, is not an easy one by any means, but uh, I just wanted to come in here and articulate what it looks like in Josephine County, and certainly welcome questions, comments from the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Representative. Questions, comments? Yes, uh, uh, You know on your, your public safety, uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair, where your sheriff was and where he is now as far as, it's not only the courthouse security, but the entire security of the, the rural communities is uh, at risk. 
Um, Mr. Chair, Representative Krieger, oh yes, oh yes. Um, so I, I'm, I'm spilling a lot of information that probably the wrong people I wouldn't want to hear, but I mean, <laughs> Josephine County has at best 20 hours on a good day, 20 hours of coverage, meaning four hours of non-coverage by any, by any police agency, actually. I won't tell you which four they are, but the state doesn't even cover Josephine County on a 24-hour basis. So the sheriff is out there as the principal law enforcement, and I do mean the sheriff, the individual who, who has been elected the sheriff is our principal law enforcement patrol. Uh, he is augmented by three contract deputies uh, and uh, he's actually got and that was going to be it uh, for a while but then the county uh, government was able to find sufficient funds to fund three more deputies to cover uh, 40 hour shifts during various portions of the week but uh, it's a huge county it's over a million acres uh, many many roads to uh, to cover there's two incorporated cities he's got the jail to watch as well there's no detective pool in the sheriff's office so uh, if somebody dies out in the county um, the state will get to it when the state's able. Uh, there's no sort of, I mean, I'm expanding beyond courthouse security here, of course, but uh, DHS cases, if there's a <coughs> case, extremely uh, emotionally charged moments when, when the state goes in, state workers go in and either threaten to remove a child or do so. Um, traditionally, the county has been able to support the state there in these removal, uh, these removal incidents, not anymore. So it's entirely uh, on the state police. And there was an awful incident, well, it's getting bad. And so uh, the state police recently, as recently as I think this week, actually closed down one of its only 24-hour uh, centers. There was the Central Point 24-hour uh, uh, hour barracks, uh, one in Portland and, and a couple else uh, and throughout the state. Well, now there's only there's, there was one less because they had to redirect those Central Point troopers up to Josephine County. So we've lost, as a result of the Josephine County public safety situation, the state has now lost one of its 24-hour um, areas of coverage. So there's a portion of I-5 that's not watched for four hours every day, on the best day. Thank you. Uh, this is a general problem, isn't it? I mean, it, it, Josephine County is, is not managing its money less well than other counties. There's just less money available uh, in the part of the state, at least, that's, uh, that's uh, been part of the timber revenue issue. Right. Is that right? Yes, Mr. Chair, that is. Lane County, right. I suspect. I'm, 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 I'm trying not to be, f I, I, that came out, came out sounding like facetious, and I don't it's mean not. it to be. It is a big problem for a number of uh, southwestern Oregon counties. Not just the small ones. Yes, not just the small ones. Lane County, uh, where I live, is in the same boat. It's, the details are different, but the effect is the same. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Chair. Yes, Senator Wetzel. In Klamath County, we have this similar situation. Uh, for a period of uh, several months, there was uh, one eight-hour shift uh, being run with four deputies covering the entire Klamath County, which has about 5,000 acre, 5,000 miles of roads. Um, since that time, since the new um, um, uh, county payments money came through, there's uh, they have another three, uh, hired another three deputies. But when that money runs out, there's no money for those three deputies again. So we're back where we were again, you know, and. Uh, so we have the uh, macabre situation of either keeping uh, the jail open or keeping people on the road, but no, no money for both. Yes. Uh, that's, that's, and, yeah. and, 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 and yes, and, and, and the way you balance that, of course, is a very interesting set of problems. Thank you, Representative. We appreciate your testimony very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair Thank and you. members. Uh, we have 